One of these things is not like the other, but we're going to make them the same. The same. Make them the same. Make them the same. Okay. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary, most war certified club maker, club fitter. If you would like, subscribe, and swing and hit that bell. That way you get more of these videos when they drop. If you'd like to know what's going on in the McGolf Shop, follow me on my social platforms. It'd be Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and they're starting over here and then over here somewhere. And you can follow me. It's I am McGolf or McGolf Custom Clubs. So, 29 Palms, California. That's where this job is coming from. Ha <laughs> ha, how about that? Mr. Jolly, who's been following us on the live stream on Mondays that we have, it's called What's in My Drawers, and we talk about golf equipment, related fittings, and whatnot. He has asked some pretty good questions, and he has sent us a set of clubs. Uh, Mr. Jolly is a from 29 Palms, California. Not 29 Palm. Yeah, 29 Palms, California. And he's been doing some building of himself, and he's done some really interesting stuff with a set of clubs. And what he has done is this. He has taken a Hogan Edge, all right, the Hogan Edge, the GCD Tours, and he has taken a chrome off. And he's taken a chrome off, blackened it out, obviously, and it's a good look. I think it's a really, really good look. He's also added an Aldela NV, not ABC, NV, all right. It is a 95 gram S Flex, you can tell right here. And it's a neat shaft. I mean, it really is a neat shaft. Didn't really have too much use for Aldola NVs in the way of iron shafts. They're a heck of a driver, but just a bit too boardy. But uh, the way that's made, you never know. It's also sporting a Lampkin, a standard Lampkin grip. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Let's try that. Lampkin. Okay. So Mr. Jolly wants him to feel like the medallions that we have here. See if I can get that autofocus going. There we go, medallions. And they're also Hogan's and with the CWJ shafts on them and the, the uh, MCC's standards with the, uh, it's a gray and pink, I think. I imagine it was supposed to be gray and red. So anyway, what's the, why does he want him to make a play of the difference? He has similar sets, he's been building, bit of a hobbyist and he wants them to be the same. So he wants them to be the same as the medallion set. So now we got to figure out how we're going to make them the same. And this is uh, some math. It's also some uh, instinct. It's also some playability. Now, he wants them to play the same. Make them the same, right? Now, we are going to make them the same in spec, okay? For one, for one thing, when you remove on older clubs that were forged and then they were chromed, Traditionally in that era and just before, there was layers of nickel and layers of copper and layers and layers and layers before you got down to the actual meat of the club. And in a lot of cases, the copper was also part of the feel of it. So it may not feel as good as it once did. It may not feel, well, it certainly won't feel like the medallion. And it's because the medallion is just a totally different club. But in order for him to swing and be able to sit over top of it and go, yeah, I know this is going to hit well, that's what we're going to install. Because let's face it, when you go from a steel shaft to a graphite shaft, there's going to be a bit of a difference in feel when you get there. So I believe Mr. Jolly's planning is correct in that if you're going to remove some of that stuff, you put the, uh, on, the, on the Hogan edge and you put a graphite shaft in it, that you very well may, uh, you're going to get a really, you know, dulled out feeling, which may make the, which may make it feel softer and get that same feel as if you had a regular forge club in a steel shaft, maybe. Okay. So what we got to do is we got to measure these guys and see just exactly what's different about them. So.
so you saw us way through that, right? So what, we, what did we have? On the original, we had about 35 and a quarter, right, in length, and we had 36, about three quarters of an inch. We also had, it was 65 and a half to 64. It was 42 to 43. Right, the swing weight was C six and a half versus C nine. The swing or the well, that was the swing weights, and the flex was just crazy difference. We're not going to make that one up. Two ninety eight to three thirty three. That's a whole lot of change in flex, bud. We're not going to make that one. Oh, and finally, the weight. The weight on the original was four forty six, as we saw, and on the new one was two twenty. So we have a total weight difference that's, that can't be made up for them to be exactly the same. And we have a flex issue where they're never going to be close to being the same. But can we get the rest of them to be the same? Put it, what do you guys think? Put, put it down in the show notes. Do you think we can make them the same or not? And while you're thinking about it and putting the show notes, I think I'm going to wait here for a moment. Okay, so now we're back. Hopefully you got the right stuff in there, okay? So can we or can we not? Well, let's talk about that. The length we certainly can cut, right? We're talking about, on average, three quarters of an inch. Now here's where we have to make an assumption as far as the set goes. Because he did send me some other, uh, other shafts to compare with, but we're just gonna work off the nine iron right now. Let's assume that they're all three quarters of an inch too long. And that's a standard issue thing that happens when people make graphite is they tend to make it longer just so the swing weight can be, well, the same. And wrong answer, fellas and ladies, wrong answer. All right, length is, the length for you is the length for you regardless of the weight, regardless of the flex, length is length. All right, so let's, let's start with that. So if we take off three quarters of an inch, what are we looking at as far as swing weight points go? All right, have you, have you come up with it yet? Is it gonna be six? Is it gonna be nine? Is it gonna be 12? What's it gonna be? Anyway, I think we can get it, okay? So we went from a nine, and it's three for every half, right? So if we take off half, that if we just take off the half of an inch, we are actually going to be uh, with really, really close <laughs> to what he was on his original. However, we're gonna cut a little bit more, and that's gonna put us under. So we're going to have to reweigh them. We're going to have to put in a small weight between two and four grams. Now, in this particular instance, I'm more likely to go a little bit heavier just to make sure. And that was because you never know about ferrules and that kind of stuff. Now, if we put a little bit more, it also is to our advantage because it's going to make the shaft a little softer. And that's going to help uh, our golfer from California swing them a little bit better. So we're gonna have to completely disassemble these guys, and we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna spine, we're gonna flow them, we're gonna add a little bit of weight, and then we're going to bend them. As we saw that the these guys are not nearly as upright as as these guys are, okay, and these are a little weak compared to these. So bending them to the loft angle is not gonna be a problem. Bending them to the lie angle could be. Now why is that? When you have new when you have new coatings that are just applied, and this looks blued, maybe a PFD type finish, you can scar them, okay? These won't stay black for very long if you're hitting them well, and that's a good thing. But it, what I really don't want to do is I don't want to mess this area up. Now, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of discussion out on the internet about whether that's good or bad that you marred this area when you go to do that. You'll see... Well, guy, I, I wanted two degrees up, and I got these marks all over my, my hosel. Is that bad? Well, it's not the same, to be sure. And the way that normal modern bedding bars are made, they're not adjustable anymore. They're just basically this crux that you put in there, and you move it back and forth. Now, can you do something with that? Yeah, they used to make sheets of copper. You could roll it around in there, and you put it there, and that would abuse. it would take the abuse that that would get on there. And you'll see that a lot of times. What I have is an old school adjustable bending bar. And what it does, it really clamps on and so that it's really not moving. Now, what I tend to leave behind in some cases, the softer the metal, the worse, 
is just little uh, indentations that basically can be rubbed off. But when you have this coating on here, it can be it can make things a little more dicey. Okay, so we got to be really really careful. And if it truly is PVD, it may very well make it harder, and I may not be able to bend it all the way up like we think we might be able to do. So there goes, that's going to be some of the problems. And then again, we got to talk about putting that same type of grip on, right? Because this grip weighs more than this grip. So there's all those things that are going to come into play. So can we get the length right? Yes. Can we get the loft and lie rat <laughs> right? Mm, probably. And can we get the, can we get the swing weight on? Yeah, we're going to get that. And then we're going to clean them all up and we're going to do Mr. Jolly a bit of a favor. Uh, and we're going to do a little bit of fair. He did a pretty good job here, but Mr. Jolly, there was a big old glue booger and I took the glue booger off and we're going to help him out on these sets too, to make them look good. So let's get started with something like that. <sighs> okay. So we're taking a break here. And what I did is I blew off the grips for Mr. Jolly and and it made a mess. So I had to clean up the shop. I had to scrub the floors, Navy thing. So we're waiting on it to dry. In fact, I waited till the next day, hence all this different outfit. But let's talk about what we're, what we're doing. Hogan Edge, the GCD one that has, it has actually some pretty cool design characteristics about it in that it has perimeter weighting, but it also has heel and toe weighting. Now the cavity isn't extremely deep, but in the time frame that wasn't a thing. Uh, the head's bigger, right? The head is bigger, and it, so it can make it easier to hit. Now, what also can happen? What also can happen is the uh, center gravity can come up, so you may actually hit more penetrating shots, and that's all design characteristic stuff of the iron. Now, with the light weight, it should be easy to swing. However, it is going to be more stiff than the other club, so there is going to be a feel difference, but how much it will yet to be determined. Now the other part is on the medallion club, the medallion is a, a much newer club and if you noticed it had a little wider sole, i.e. deeper cavity and almost on the same size. And that makes that one very playable. They both have a modicum of offset and so they should be easier to bring, they should be easy to bring around, right? So what we have to do is we basically have to totally disassemble these guys and then start right back over because I'm sure they are taper tipped, which means we really can't mess with the bottom too much. However, there is going to be one trick of the trade I'm going to have to show you here. And hopefully the GCDs have a shoulder in which we can use a shouldered ferrule instead of the white one that came with it. So while it's, while it's right there, let's go and see just exactly how we're going to take them apart. So we're back in the shop. I had to finish a couple of sets of clubs. One's going to Florida. And I believe the other one's going very north in Ohio. We'll see. Anyway, the Mizuno product's been doing pretty good for us. Thank you for that. Now, back to the Hogan. As we talked about, you know, this is a, it's a nice little club to be sure. Okay. But now we got to take it apart. So this is going to be the taking it apart part. And again, we're really concerned about the, the coating that we've put on this thing. And we really want to be gentle with the heat that we put here to prevent discoloration. We're going to use this guy and we're going to heat this little white guy up. And then we're going to try and pull it off. And let's see if I can do this standing up here. And we want to do it without actually marring the shaft either. And there we go. And we'll pull it down. So now the next thing is to heat this up and then put it in the shaft puller. So I'm just going to heat it up like you guys have seen in the past, but we'll, we'll watch you. You can watch me uh, pull it in the shaft puller. How's that? All right, let's go do that. Well, let's see. I'll try it here. See if we can make it happen. Okay, hopefully we didn't delay too much and we can get this thing going.
and voila, there we go. And we got a lot of glue in it, so we got some stuff to take out now. Okay, so we got a lot of junk in here. We just got to clean out. And see, most of it's gone. Now we just got to get it with the... And now that's clean. Now the big thing is, is that we cleaned it up so there's no mooring. But what we are finding is that there's a shoulder in there. So we might be able to use a, a, a shoulder or a collared ferrule. That's a good thing. So if we look really, really close in there, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But it's not a shoulder. It's just a really high angled chamfer. So that's what we're going to stay with. We're going to use a non-collared ferrule. And since I started with the 9, you can just see me put down the rest now. We'll start with this guy and see what happens. Okay, you've seen where we've torn this thing down basically to parade rest, right? The We've got just the shaft and just the head and now we're trying to figure out how we're going to go about it so if you guys remember at the beginning we were going to have to add weight now i was thinking that this was a taper tip it's not uh it's either been bored or hogan had a brain meltdown at one time and decided to use taper tip either way it's taper now so when i th i was looking at it and i thought well, certainly it's not going in all the way because there was some extra goo at the bottom of the club and so I, I reamed them out all the way on this guy, all the way in the back. They've been, they've been reamed out. And, and they weren't reamed out any more than they already were. I was just cleaning up all the crap for them. So that's what we've got. Now, the other part was is that we've cleaned up the tips. All right? We scraped them all off. I didn't use the sandpaper. I used the knife in a scraping motion in order to make that happen. And then we made the hole big enough on the end to accept the tip weight. So now we're we're pretty good right there, right? And so now we got to put them together. So I All right, what I'm doing now is I'm spining the shaft and spining gets me into where I need to orient the shaft. Then I'm going to go in, I'm going to put it into a I'm going to I'm going to put the head on it and then I'm going to flow it and then that's when the club is all going to be balanced and we can check everything out. So we've got everything disassembled as we showed you. There's all the ferrules from the last time. And now we're into the assembly phase. As it turns out, Mr. Jolly and I shop at the same spot <laughs> and we got the white ferrule here. Let me see if I can make it look a little bit better. There we go, the white ferrule. So we're gonna use the white ferrule again in order to make it look like it did when it came back. We talked about it and he's okay with that. So we're in pretty good shape. Now the assembly, I've got it cleaned off by the scraping like we showed you before. And I've already mixed up my glue and we get the ferrule started, but then you gotta push down on it. Everybody's all into these, these ferrule starting tools. You just got to press down, you're right there. Now we have, the, we have the tip. Now in a lot of cases, the tip in here, there's a lot of wobble. And when you have that, then that stem can break off. And what, what I try to do is I wrap it with masking tape and then glue it in. In this case, it's pretty tight that the glue will take up the space. And I just twirl it around in there. Get it in there and voila, there you go. And no shaking. All right, and then I use this and I just press down on it. And what you see is now we have it like that. And then all I do is match up the lines and then we're good to go. We get it going around here. This is getting all the glue stirred around. Line up the holes, good three taps. Then it's the ever useful square. And we wipe everything off nice and clean. Might take one or two times because now we're dealing with a white ferrule which will show just about everything and what we want to do is I know I'm covering it but it's because I have to see it the top and the bottom of the ferrule and then when you think you got it all you go back because there's always that little bit left over there we go and then the last bit in order to pre prevent it from ferrule creeping I put my little piece of tape on and away we go and then we will 
do the do the remaining part of them and we'll finish them up and we'll just see how we did <laughs> all right welcome back to the last day of this build and it has been a pretty good one i have to say when we got to make clubs the same right and it's always a real trick because unless you dry fit beforehand and you can do all the calculations you want different types of ferrules and grips that can always play into being exact right and being exact is really where we want to be if we're going to be good club makers now what happened well when i got to the point of putting them together yes the head weights were light and we knew that we were going to have to add weight which we did we added a four we should have added a little bit more however they just didn't make that kind of weight for this one in the lead that i had now the reason being is when you're using graphite i just like a particular tip insertion so that the shaft is stable within the club you know it, the more the the more tip you take away by adding the weight distance just means you give it that more of an opportunity to break and i really like the tip insertion instead i would give up just a little bit for that second i got the okay from mr jolly while we we're on the live stream so if you guys don't know, I have a live stream every Monday, 5.30 Eastern time here in the U.S. And we just talk about golf clubs, golf fitting, golf repairs. Goes for about an hour. It's really, really neat. So anyway, we've got them put together. And I, I, I recognize that the 5-iron was 37. When we do 37, I really, really like to do 3 8 inch differentiations as they go down. Because that will make the pitching wedge a little bit taller and not so much so small that even short people are bending over on. I'm just not a real fan of that. And, and he said, okay, so that's what I did. Now, when you do that, that makes the really high irons really light, but makes the, the lower irons uh, basically normal. Now, he was at, and we talked about the, the specs that we had before, he was at, at the five iron, he was 6.5 and at 37. And I'm at, well, at 37 and a quarter, actually which really was closer to being about 37. So I made it 37 and I got to five. So a swing weight and a half, that's pretty good based on a guess. And from there on down, I was pretty much a swing weight and a half off. So uh, that's not too bad. Now the other part was when going up, it becomes more, right? Because it, it's shorter, lighter, and it was upwards of three and four away. But I don't have it to compare, so I don't know if his was lighter or not either. But uh, it, it, it incrementally got better, and that's not a surprise when you go to do the 3 8 inch. The other part that he asked me to do was bend it. Bend it to the lie angle that was like the 5 in these, and they were about 2 degrees up. When I measured the 3 iron, the 3 iron was some crazy flat number, like 54 and a half. That is some crazy number. That even in normal time, that's something like five degrees flat, four or five degrees flat, just nutty. And he wants me to go two up. So that's like a seven degree swing. Well, I got that. You know, I was always told uh, forges are only four, cast is only two. And that's true. And he probably wouldn't have got that much, but he took off the outer coating, which I certainly would have spider webbed had he not done that. So it made it a little softer, a little easier to bend. And I was able to bend anywhere from six degrees at some, because the line angles were all over the map on this one. They were four to five degrees flat to standard. I don't know what was going on with that, but they're all in line now. So Mr. Jolly, they're all in line. And they're all the very traditional lofts that these guys come into. So it should be, it should look pretty good. Now I do like the looks of them and I, I really think that they turned out pretty good. So as soon as we get this very last grip on, it's coming to you and Robin will be contacting you shortly. So again, guys, it is a neat little experiment on making clubs the same. Hopefully we took you through the journey of doing that. If you have something that's like this or a club repair and you get a little bit out of your depth, don't be afraid to give us a holler at mcgolfshop at roadrunner.com or clubmaker at mcgolf.net or just give us a call at the shop, 941-GOLF-740 area code. And, and we'll help you out. If not, enjoy the, enjoy the craft, learn a lot, learn from your mistakes and, and, or learn from this and do better on the next one. And Mr. Jolly, I got something for you. I cleaned up your ferrules. They're going to look pretty cool. <laughs> so hopefully you guys liked it and let's see your scores go low.